Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, um, we're out, obviously, Home Road Rest, which you've taken over in October. Yep, I started on the 1st of October after Jill's well-earned retirement on the end of September. So was it you, well, you were Manx, grew up Manx when I came back? I did, I did. I, could, I did the typical uh, tearaway teenager. So I was born, born on the island, grew up on the island, finished school, went across, did a stint across and realised how much better it is over here and came home. So you um, worked in, because I worked in horses, that sounds a bit odd, you worked with horses? I have, so yeah. I've grown up. I've been, I was very fortunate as a youngster. Um, my mother was into horses, so we were very lucky as kids. We had our own ponies and grew up in horses, but also in the hospitality, with my father being in hospitality and restaurants. Uh, so I've always been around them, and, and I've worked with them throughout, uh, and just, yeah, built a career. And that took you around the world, pretty much? Pretty much across the UK, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so I've worked, you know, in the in the northwest, down in the south of England, um, pretty much all over the UK, as well as a few places here on the island. It's just obviously you've taken over from the others, sort of been here, feels like forever. And how does that come as a, do you feel like that as a responsibility or do you think it's a great opportunity? Huge, both actually, absolute huge responsibility because what a pair of boots to fill you know she's been here all her life the place was set up by her mother her aunt and what an incredible legacy but also you know massive massive challenge and, and a challenge that i'm so looking forward but also a massive honor to be able to come here in such a, a recognized established and well-known place it's absolutely humbling and how have found getting used to the animals you already got a few favorites or I'd like to say I haven't, but I do, <laughs> like you do anyway. Uh, they're all complete different characters. You know, we, we've got the grumpy ones, we've got the friendly ones, we've got the ones that love being loved, and they're, they're all chalk and cheese, and it's just getting to know them all. You know, I'm still learning names. Please don't ask me who the donkeys are, because I still don't know which donkey is which, because they all completely look the same to me. Well, yeah, um, we are doing the donkeys, because my own self mission, I have to donkeys, so... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm so determined to be in Charles. I'm, I'm going to get him in there. He's determined he's getting involved. So. Absolutely, yeah. Part of the action. They love it. They do love it. So just, what's the plan for this year? So we've got lots of little bits in the background. So obviously, uh, I'm sure people are aware, seen on social media, we brought in Katie Kinley to help us with the coffee shop. Uh, so we wanted to grow on that side of it. We were also increasing opening hours to get people here because people absolutely love coming here. They love coming to see the donkeys. They love coming to see the horses. Um, and we just want it more accessible for the public. They've asked us to open more. We're opening more. So going forward, we're going to be open every weekend um, up until Easter. We're hoping to have a bit of an Easter special, maybe an Easter egg hunt or something for the kiddies. Uh, and then obviously open longer you know, for the summer. That donkey's ruined my continuity now. <laughs> so, I mean, we've got, what, two, four, six, eight, ten... So we've got 13 donkeys all together. That's cheating, you know. I'm... Yeah, I know, I know. So, on the estate, we've got 62 horses and 13 donkeys all together. Um, and I think that's kind of going towards pretty much the top ends that we can accommodate here. Because uh, we are set in 93 acres of lands. So it's, it's a bit tricky managing it, you know, and rotating it. But luckily in the winter, we do have use for a very kind lady of the valley to winter the horses. So at least it gives us a chance to give our land a break so we can get it ready for when we bring all the horses up for when we open. Do you find that you've you spoke about opportunities and challenges? You've taken on mm -hmm. what is one of the uh, sort of institutional charities almost. It is. How, you know, what form for obviously people are kind of generous with charity? Just going forward, yeah. what sort of engagement do you want? To so, yeah, basically going forward, what we're doing, we're, we're, we're here to safeguard the future of the home. You know, this home is going to be here for generations to come because it's here for the horses of the island. So we don't just home ex-trammers, you know, and which it was set up back in the 50s for the ex-trammers and the ex-milk you know, part, you know, cart and working ponies. But we're here, we're here for all the, you know, the island horses. You know, we're here for horses where people are falling on hard times or where there's... You know, there's been illnesses and they can't look after them anymore. So we, we take them on and we look after them and they stay here. They don't leave here once they're here. Uh, and they have a lovely, happy retirement. They can free roam and do what they want. But also that meets with a challenge of making sure we have enough funds because we rely solely on the generosity of donations and legacies and the public. 
Um, there is a misconception. We do get no government funding. <coughs> we do get no support from the Alamann government. So everything you see that we manage and, and do here is purely simply through fundraising, donations and legacies. So well, uh, like I say, you've taken you said you have big boots to fill, but you're I'm certainly in safe hands and we look forward to see how it plays out. I'm so excited. Bit nervous, bit scared. It's huge, huge boots to fill, but you know what? Let's give it a crack going forward. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.